Welcome to a special question and answer session of musings from Arledge. I'm coming to you from Toledo, Spain. Actually, I'm in the remains of the Roman circus just outside of Toledo, Spain, where they used to have chariot races close to 2,000 years ago. Most of the walls, of course, are broken down at this point. The world's changed a lot in the last 2,000 years. Think about this. 2,000 years ago, the Oregon Ducks had zero football national championships. That puts it in perspective, I think. All right, so I, I'd asked for some questions that I could answer, and I got a, a whole series of them, so I'm gonna go through these. And I appreciate everybody chiming in on this. And uh, I never did get Rick Caruso's approval for the best question to get, uh, to get a trip on his yacht in the Mediterranean. I'm still looking into that. To be honest, I'm not sure any of these questions are good enough to justify that, and I know my answers won't be. Uh, even so, let's, uh, let's get started. Uh, the 209 asks, are you optimistic about USC getting their NIL situation fixed? I think that depends what you mean by fixed. I think USC is doing with NIL what they want to do, uh, other than the fact that I think they want to have more opportunities for existing players. USC is not going to jump into the give a bag of money to a high school recruit to sign on the dotted line game. Uh, and they will continue to lose players to Miami and Oregon and other programs that are doing that. I've written about this a number of times. I think that Lincoln Riley's position on this is reasonable. I think he believes that it is uh, poisonous to the locker room to be paying some high school players vast sums of money. And a lot of these kids aren't proven. I mean, there are some can't miss prospects coming out of high school, but very, very few. And so I think it creates dissension, and, and I think he believes that it makes it so that um, you're spending a lot of money on guys who may not deserve it, and there'll be a lot of pressure to play those guys. There will be animosity from other players who may be better players and more proven players in the, in the locker room. So I don't think USC's gonna fix that. I think they're gonna continue to run the way they've been running. At some point in the future, I think the Trojans may be able to say, look at how much our current players are making. We're not gonna offer you X dollars to sign, but if you play here, uh, you're going to get paid the way other guys have been paid, uh, which is pretty good. I think that's probably what they're going to do, but, um, but no, you're gonna continue to have guys who sign elsewhere who would have signed with USC because USC is not going to give them hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, before they show up on campus. That's just the way it's going to be. And Riley's gonna have to overcome that by landing the guys who don't care as much oftentimes quarterbacks and other guys who, who, who want to be developed by Lincoln Riley. Uh, and he's going to have to overcome it in the transfer portal. And I think he's going to continue to hit the transfer portal hard every year. Um, uh, Tampa Trojan Forever asked me what my favorite lawyer joke is. I don't have any favorite lawyer jokes. Uh, he also asked me what my favorite CPA joke is. Not only do I have a favorite CPA joke, I don't even have a favorite CPA. So I don't have much to say on that, Tampa. Um, all right, HB4SC, are you convinced Lincoln Riley will make the right moves on defense and special teams to put USC in a position to win the national championship, meaning for this next season? Um, do I think he's gonna make the necessary moves? Uh, I think he probably will eventually. The reality is that Lincoln Riley's teams are gonna score so much that he doesn't necessarily have to have a top five defense to win a national title. He doesn't have to have a dominant defense. He has to have a good defense because when you run up against elite teams, they're going to be able to score and they're going to be able to stop you occasionally. Um, has he made the right moves so far? i got to be honest, I don't know. I I'm Like many of you, I am a little bit skeptical of Alex Grinch. I'm not saying he should have been fired. I'm just saying I don't know that he's proven anything at this point. Not at USC, not at Oklahoma, not at Ohio State. Uh, I thought he did a pretty good job at Washington State with a roster that usually has less talent. But I don't know. Uh, and, and I think high school recruits don't know, and I think that's showing up on the defensive recruiting. Lincoln Riley is going to be able to recruit a bunch of superstar offensive guys. His track record of developing players, of putting guys in a good position to, uh, to succeed and show their skills is tremendous. Defensively, I think there's a wait and see. And hopefully this year's unit will improve dramatically and put USC in the playoff, and that will start to answer those questions. But I just don't know. Um, Okay, SC 93-er. Is Klievkov taking the Pac-12 reins and finding out what a dumpster fire he inherited, equivalent to your buying gold, gold in uh, 
quotation marks, at an Oklahoma gas station and finding out it's pyrite. Is a conference currently worth more than the sum value of your pyrite? So SC93, or there are a lot of assumptions built into this question, a lot of false assumptions. You seem to believe that just because I bought jewelry at an Oklahoma gas station at night just outside of Ardmore, uh, that turned out not to be real gold, that I was fooled by that. That's not true. The reality is that I prefer fake gold to real gold, not for cost reasons. I just think it's more beautiful. And so when you make comments about me being tricked, and that's, I take what you, what you mean by this question, then, uh, then your, your question is just starting from a false assumption. Now, is my fake gold worth more than the Pac-12? Um, no, no, not in the sense that the Pac-12 does have a larger value on the books, um, even without USC and UCLA. Uh, a, an Oregon-led Pac-12 is still worth more than my two gold chain, well, quasi-gold chains, and the ring that I got. Not much more, but, but it's worth more. Here's the thing, though. I don't think my stuff is going to continue to decrease in value the way the Pac-12 will be. So I, I do think Klyovkov has a problem on his hands, that the Pac-12 isn't worth much today. Two years from now, it's going to be worth even less. Four years from now, the Pac-12 will be about as lively as these ruins. And, and they will probably be playing as many games in the Pac-12 as they are running chariot races here. But, um, you know, Klyovkov is, is going to have a few years of good compensation before that happens, and then he'll jump somewhere else. Maybe he'll run UCLA's athletic department after that. Uh, okay. Moose for USC. Did you lose any faith in Riley when you decided to retain Grinch? Did I lose faith in Riley? No. I still think he's probably the best young coach in the business. But I'll say this. He better be right about Grinch. He knows Alex Grinch a lot better than any of us do, but he better be right, because if not, he's going to waste a spectacular talent in Caleb Williams. USC, with the offensive line they're, they're going to have with the transfer guys, with the skill position talent they're going to have around Caleb Williams, and with having the guy who, sorry about the dogs, and, and with having Caleb Williams, a quarterback, the most talented quarterback in USC history, and a guy who is going to be the next Patrick Mahomes, if you don't win a national title with that because your defense can't stop anybody, shame on you. And, and so we'll see whether he made the right move with uh, retaining Grinch or not. Uh, I think all of us are skeptical, but he can prove us wrong. But long term, no, I think Riley long term is still a great bet. He's a, he's a smart young coach. Uh, who, who does an exceptional job with quarterbacks. His teams are going to score a lot of points. They're going to win a lot of games. And if you're winning 11 games every year, you're going to have opportunities where, uh, where, where you can um, – maybe the defense is a little better than usual. You, uh, you manage to pull off an upset or two and win a national title. Do I think that's likely to happen? I do. So I haven't lost faith in him. I think he's a great hire, and, and I'm excited about the future. But we'll see. We'll see whether he develops the sorts of defenses that, uh, that he needs to develop. Um, if you had to guess which of all the Pac-12 head coaches had a checkered past, who might that be and why? That's from uh, B.I.G. Trojan. Um, B.I.G. Uh, like, or B1G, like Big Ten. Big Ten Trojan. Um, okay, look, I appreciate the opportunity to engage in defamatory statements online and just hope it doesn't come back to bite me. I'll say this. I saw... Uh, I saw the uh, the tattoo that um, that Oregon's head coach got recently, and when I look at a tattoo like that, I think that's a guy that exercises really bad judgment. And so, if I had to guess, I'm not saying he's killed anybody. I'm not saying he was a drug trafficker. I don't think he's done any of those things. I'm not accusing him of illegal conduct. I'm not accusing him of anything. I'm just saying his tattoo seems to suggest that he exercises really bad judgment. Now, we'll know for sure when, when he decides whether he stays at Oregon or abandons them for a better football program. As all of you guys know, Oregon coaches, if they have even a little bit of success, they tend to run away from Oregon and go to a real football school. If he does that, then Dan Lanning may have better judgment than I think. If he actually sticks around at Oregon long term, then the combination of that and the tattoo make me think that he's a guy who does a lot of bad things and has probably been doing bad things since he was a toddler. But we just don't know yet. We just don't know. And maybe, maybe I'm wrong about all that. Maybe Dan Lanning really wants to coach in a second-rate conference with San Diego State as his primary rival. Maybe. 
And if that's what he wants, he's going to get a chance to do it. So we'll see. Other than that, I don't want to comment on any of the other Pac-12 coaches because I don't want to be sued. So we're going to leave that alone. Uh, Gilbert AZ Trojan, in and out or Whataburger? In and out. I may live in Texas now, but I grew up in California, and frankly, it's not even close. I can't figure out why anybody would prefer Whataburger to In-N-Out. Makes no sense. Uh, question from Trojans2021, asking about the prize on the yacht, which, again, I can't promise to anybody right now. But he's asking whether this is the same yacht that Olivia Jade was on um, when... Um, when the whole bribing scandal thing went down. I think so. I don't know how many yachts Rick Caruso has. I assume one, because why would anybody need more than one yacht? I mean, do you have a Tuesday yacht and a Thursday yacht? I don't think so. I don't think anybody does. So yeah, I think it's the same yacht, and I still don't think you're gonna be able to get on it. Uh, Trojan ZZZ. Is, Ryan being a, is Riley being a little Helton-ish by keeping a clearly inferior DC? Is he worried? Is he too worried about helping a friend versus building the best staff possible? Um, comment that there were some great DCs. Is he being? Look, I'm not going to call Lincoln Riley a little Heltonish. Uh, Lincoln Riley won 11 games this year. He wins 11 games almost every year. Uh, Clay Helton takes at least a season and a half, usually two seasons, to win 11 games, and a lot of those wins are ugly and boring and sad to watch. When I would watch a Clay Helton win. I would die a little bit inside. So no, I'm not going to say that Lincoln Riley's been a little Heltonish, because I think that's grossly unfair. Um, USC won. Could you please give an example of you defending Grinch in a court of football defensive coordinators? Uh, look, USC won. I don't know what you think, but Alex Grinch makes over a million dollars a year. I don't do pro bono advocacy for somebody who makes that much money. If he wants to hire me to defend him, I'll do my best. I've had worse clients. I've had better clients, I think. I've had arguments that are easier to make than defending uh, Alex Grinch. But look, that was his first year. He took over a defense that was horrific. They got better in some areas, not nearly good enough. I think it's safe to say if Alex Grinch doesn't perform this year, then he's gone. So we'll see what he's got. I hope it, I, I hope it works. Um, B. Davis, 711. If you had to give a percentage chance for Caleb Williams to repeat as a Heisman winner, what would it be? 10%. Look, they don't want to give the Heisman to the same guy two years in a row. They almost always find an excuse not to. I don't see why it'll be any different now. I think Archie Manning will continue to be the only two-time Heisman winner, which is pretty crazy when you consider that he was a fairly mediocre Heisman winner. I think he had three rushing touchdowns that second year. Uh, makes no sense at all. But do I think they're going to give it to Caleb Williams? I do not. Do I think he's going to put up absurd numbers? I do. He's an extraordinary talent working in a great system for a great quarterback. And the truth is, the guy still has room to improve. He, he was only a true sophomore that hadn't started a lot. Caleb Williams as a junior is going to be an absolute monster. So he'll be great, but I don't think they'll give it to him. Um, a Mike Dietlin with an interesting question that has absolutely nothing to do with football. Is a dog's mouth actually less bacteria ridden than a human's? My doctor told me this recently. This might explain why so many of us allow them to lick our faces like our heads were lollipops, but it only has me wondering if I should get a new doctor. I don't know if you should get a new doctor or not. I do think though that you should... Here's my question, Mike. I'm gonna, and I know you're not supposed to answer a question with a question. I'm going to do it. Why do you care about how clean a dog's mouth is? What is it you intend to do with the dog's mouth? See, from my perspective, a dog's mouth may or may not be cleaner than mine. But I know what I'm going to do with my mouth, and I'm comfortable with it. It's not entirely clear what I should be doing with the dog's mouth that would make me so curious as to how clean or dirty it is. So I'm a little skeptical that the dog's mouth is all that clean. I see what dogs eat. And, and so I'm not sure that's true, but Mike, I would say this, just stay away from the dog's mouth. Whatever you're thinking about doing, don't. Just stop, okay. SC the one, uh, ask it, I enjoyed the Rod McNeil interview, but how did your family become friends with the McNeils? He's mentioning that Rod is about 22 years older than I am. Uh, yeah, so Rod and his wife, Pam, became members of my dad's church. My dad's a pastor um, back in the late 70s. 
in the San Francisco Bay Area. So that's how I got to know Rod and Pam, and I've known them for a very long time, very close family friends, and um, glad you enjoyed the interview. Rod's a great guy. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. Rod has a lot of interesting insights, and uh, he's one of the best human beings I've ever met. Um, Ricky Jarrett, 18, who do you think will lead the team in sacks next year? So I don't know the answer to that. I, I think that um, I think that it needs to be it needs to be the edge rusher. It's hard to lead the team in sacks from defensive tackle. I know that happened last year, but but USC had an extraordinary defensive tackle, and they moved him around a lot. Um, so who's who's going to win that position? I don't know. If I had to guess, if I had to guess, I would think last year's Auburn transfer. I'm blanking on his name, although I do know it. I promise. Um, because he had that job wrapped up before he got hurt, and he is um, he's a he's a big kid, he's a fast kid, he has all the talent in the world. I would guess it would be him, but I don't know. I also think USC is likely to get a lot of sacks from a lot of guys, not as many sacks as they got from Thule last year. But I think we could see a lot of guys getting four, five, six, seven, and if you have you know four, five, six, seven guys doing that, then you're going to have a pretty good defense. So we'll see. Um, DF1982, is the human brain capable of comprehending how girly the Bruins are? Uh, mine is, and, and maybe yours is too. It may be that there are others who don't get it, that they actually look at UCLA, they look at what they wear, they look at how they play, how they talk, what they do, and that they don't get it. And that's kind of embarrassing. But if your question is whether my brain comprehends it, of course it does. Don't ask dumb questions. Okay. LDIA Bootney, what's the biggest reason for USC struggling with tackling for the last decade? He lists a bunch of possible reasons. California high school style of play, overrated talent, lack of teaching fundamentals, all the above. Uh, look, it's probably all the above. Here's the thing, though. Tackling depends partially on technique, obviously. Um, it depends partially on being in the right position. A lot of tackles are missed because you're a step slow and you're reaching instead of being able to drive through the ball carrier. Um, and part of tackling is just downright determination and want to. There are guys who want to hit and they tend to be good tacklers. Um, I think, I think in, the, in the last year before Riley got there, I think there was some questionable effort defensively. And I think that probably explains a lot of the bad tackling, though not all of it. Um, what is the problem now? I don't know. I don't know. And, and uh, I'll say this, Lincoln Riley knows it's a problem, and they're going to have to come up with a way to fix it because you cannot win football games against good football teams when you can't tackle. The two losses to Utah, which were obviously the difference between a playoff season and a non-playoff season, were both decided by terrible tackling. I mean, the second game was also decided by Caleb's injury. USC may have still outscored him. But those games were decided by horrible tackling. And, and USC has to get better. And, and I don't know. I don't see what these guys do in practice. I don't know what they're working on. So it's hard to say, but um, it was ugly. Um, got USC one. Chris, do you, feel that, do you feel let down that our incessant hectoring of the SC Tau crew in all likelihood cost us our first Ed Kazarian Tau waving national championship? The answer is no. I will continue to hector them if they continue to act like that on the sideline. I know there are people who disagree with me. I know there are people who say it's, it's fine. They're just trying to get people pumped up. That's no way to get people pumped up. I don't even like musical acts that have synchronized dancing. I don't like it. Britney Spears, nope. Madonna, nope. If you have some sort of dance, if you have choreography in your act, then I don't like you. That's true even of musical acts. It must be true of football teams. We need to stop doing that. If the guys want to wave towels in the air, they can. I don't think it's good, but it's the towel dancing aspect that I find so offensive. I want it to stop. I don't think anybody at USC will listen to me. I begged them to fire Clay Helton for about five years. So I know that they don't actually listen to what I say, but I think it needs to stop. So I don't care about the Ed Kazarian National Championship. Uh, SC the one, are ducks smart? No. If it quacks like a duck, is it a duck? Most likely. Can ducks soar like eagles? We know they can't. Does a one-legged duck swim in a circle? I've never, I've never tested that hypothesis. I, I, I would assume a one leg, a real duck, not a Eugene, Oregon duck, but a real duck. I would assume they can overcome that and find a way to paddle their one leg 
maybe slightly inward to keep them on a straight path. I don't know, but I would think they could do it. Nature is, is remarkable that way. Why did the duck cross the football field? How is duck best served? Why do they call cowering or stooping down ducking? That last question is a strong one. Um, and I don't think they call it cowering because they named it after the Oregon Ducks. I assume they named the Oregon Ducks the Ducks because they were already using that term to, to, to refer to cowering and cowardice. But I don't know for sure. Um, and, and finally, the real USC, our hedge versus our ledge. Uh, this is a reference to the fact that my that my username on we are SC message boards is our hedge. Some of you may know why that is. It's because when I first showed up uh, at college, um, the equipment guy told me that I had a locker and he, and he showed me the location of the locker and the locker said our hedge rather than our ledge, which showed just how excited they were to have me show up on campus to play football and baseball there. They were so excited they couldn't even bother to figure out what my name was. And so that sort of stuck and I've occasionally used our hedge as a nickname since then. Or I should say that friends of mine who knew me at the time will sometimes use our hedge to refer to me because they think it's funny. And it kind of is. That wasn't even the most, that wasn't even the most um, offensive or troubling uh, problem I had uh, at, at William Jewell College. Um, once upon a time, we showed up to a baseball game. We didn't have enough uniforms, so I had to wear a different color uniform than everybody else. I was wearing a powder blue uniform, which is offensive, when everybody else was in grays. And the coat, uh, clearly, if there are 27 guys on the team and 25 of them have the gray jerseys, you know the other two guys aren't going to play. So I asked him if I could just wear gray practice pants and just sit with a warm-up jacket on the, on the bench. He said no. He actually forced me to go out into the field and take, a, and take infield uh, before the game, which seemed cruel. But that's what he did, and if I saw him today, I'd probably punch him in the face. But at the time, I didn't want to because I didn't want to go to jail and because I was hoping that at some point he would think I, became, I was a good baseball player and he'd actually put me in the game. Uh, I don't think he ever did conclude I was a good baseball player. I saw him shortly after the season. I'd played on his team the entire season. I see him, uh, I see him at, the, at, the, at the athletic facility uh, about a month after the season ended, and he greeted me with, Hey, Miker. Apparently thinking my name is Mike, and that Miker is a cool nickname for someone named Mike. Uh, that told me all I needed to know. I didn't play any more baseball. I concentrated only on football after that. Okay, that's our question and answer session. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to go back to Toledo, Spain and finish my vacation here. I will see you all next week, and I'm going to have a special interview next week. I'm not going to tell you who it is because... Uh, because uh, I don't know exactly, but we're going to have a series of interviews co coming up. Um, I've gotten the uh, I've gotten approval from Mark Carrier to be on the show very soon, and uh, and and a handful of other guys from the uh, from the late '80s. So we're going to have some great stories to tell. Uh, anyway, wish you all the best. Thanks for listening. Bye.